In this lecture, we will discuss extracellular edema and causes of extracellular edema. In our last lecture, we discussed edema and intracellular edema. We discussed that edema is basically the accumulation of excess fluid in the intracellular or extracellular space. So basically, edema is excess fluid, fluid accumulation or the presence of excess fluid inside the cells or in the extracellular spaces. Now, in our last lecture, we discussed that basically the intracellular edema, the, the excess accumulation of fluid inside the cells were basically due to uh, depressed metabolism or uh, decreased supply of nutrients to different cells or it could be due to inflammation. Now, uh, let's talk about the causes of extracellular edema. To talk about the causes, we must know that basically the heart is pumping the blood through the aorta, different arteries, arterioles and through the capillaries into the different organs, tissues and then the cells. Now, these are different cells which are present, present in a tissue. Blood is coming through here, oxygenated blood is coming through different blood vessels and finally through the capillaries. Plasma basically leaks out into the interstitium. The cells, the cells basically they take in the oxygenated components, the nutrients and uh, then the waste material, it goes out of the cells. Then the waste material or the deoxygenated uh, blood uh, plasma, they basically accumulate and through the capillaries, they enter the uh, venous side and from the venules, veins and the vena cava, they, return, they are returned to the heart. So basically, there is small leakage of fluid from the capillaries. Now, capillaries are basically the ending point of um, vascular system and they are so small that their wall is basically made of single cell. This is capillaries. Now, along with capillaries, there are some other vessels which are basically known as the lymphatic vessels. They are also present. So, fluid basically ooze out of the small spaces between the cells of the capillaries and they come into the interstitium and then the, the cells basically consume the uh, their nutrients, the required nutrients and the waste it goes out and it is uh, accumulated through the uh, venous system uh, and it goes again into the heart. Now there are some large particles for example, if there are some large particles, proteins or fates for example, these large particles they cannot enter the capillaries, they cannot enter the capillaries so they are basically conducted through the special system, the special vessels they are known as the lymphatics. Now what are basically the causes of extracellular edema or what are the causes of basically accumulation of excess fluid in the extracellular spaces? Now, the basically, there are two main uh, causes. First is basically excess leakage. Abnormal leakage of plasma from the capillaries. So, small amount of fluid do come out of the capillaries, but sometimes there is excessive leakage. A lot of fluid starts coming out of the capillaries and it starts accumulating in the extracellular spaces. Now, this is one cause of extracellular edema. The, the, the leakage, the, the oozing out of the plasma may be so high that the venous side won't be able to take it back and it will start, start accumulating in the extracellular spaces and it will lead to extracellular edema. So, excessive leakage from the capillaries of plasma. Plasma basically leaking out through the capillaries and accumulating in the interstitial spaces outside the cells is a cause of extracellular edema. Now, what basically causes this excessive leakage from the capillaries? Now, there are a lot of toxins, a lot of causes, a lot of diseases, a lot of pathologies which can cause excessive leakage. We will discuss them uh, one by one. But it, in this lecture, we are just talking about the extracellular edema in general. We are not going into detail. So, any factor leading to the excessive leakage of plasma from the capillaries which will lead to excess fluid accumulation outside the cells in the extracellular spaces in the interstitium will lead to extracellular edema. Another factor is basically failure of lymphatics. So, basically, as we discussed, there are some large particles of uh, fates or proteins or which sometimes cannot enter into the these capillaries and these capillaries cannot take them away to the venous side. So these there are some special uh, vessels, the lymphatic vessels, or which carry these large pro particles. These large particles are basically carried to these lymphatic vessels. So if there is failure of the lymphatic vessels due to any reason, if there is failure or blockage, and these lymphatic vessels are unable to take these large particles, then there will be uh, again there will be accumulation of these particles, and then uh, there will be excess fluid uh, accumulation outside the cells, and it again will basically lead to edema which will be extracellular edema. So basically the causes of extracellular edema include excessive leakage of plasma from the capillaries and the failure of lymphatics. Both of these factors, both of these factors will basically lead to excessive fluid in the interstitial spaces or the spaces outside the cells and fluid, more fluid will be coming, more fluid will be coming into the spaces and less of that fluid will be drained. So the end result is that there will be more than normal or excess fluid in the extracellular spaces and these are basically the two main categories of extracellular edema. Thanks a lot for watching the video.